Hello everyone. Welcome to the Aural Theory YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to take you through five simple steps for getting through a melodic dictation. So grab a piece of manuscript paper or even just some regular paper with lines drawn on it and we'll get started. There are, like I said, five simple steps that you can go through to not necessarily master, but that you can use as a guide to make your way through a melodic dictation. So the first one is to map what you know. So take advantage of what you know and use it to help you get started. Okay, so because we have one sharp and we know we're in major, that means that we're in G major. Next, you wanna look at your starting pitch. So this is a B, not a G. If it was a G, it'd be easy. Then it's your one, your first scale degree or do. I like to use movable do solfege and that's what I'm gonna use. You are welcome to use whatever you want. Okay, so this is the third scale degree, or we're gonna call it me, okay? So that's the third scale degree, um, it's also B. Okay, so we start in the third scale degree, or me, and then for the dictations that I will give you in my videos and what most people will give you, you're gonna end on do. So ask yourself, what is do, or tonic, or the first scale degree? And that would be G. And another thing that's helpful to do is to think through all of your important scale degrees. So another big one is the fifth scale degree or soul. And that in the key of G is G, A, B, C, D. You can always just do that on your desk if you don't know about it, okay? So D is soul or five, okay? So you just wanna tuck those away for yourself. You can, you know, you can always just, um, sketch them on the paper. It really doesn't hurt. It, it's helpful to just have those because they're, they're tendency tones. You might also want to think, okay, what's my seventh scale degree? Because that's another big one. And that is F sharp. Okay. So map out what you know. So we know we're in G major. We know we start on me or the third scale degree, and then we're going to end on G or do. So our last note is here or here. Step two is to take a rhythmic dictation before you do anything else. So what's a rhythmic dictation? Let me just show you how to set up your rhythmic dictation. So I like to do one line for each major beat and then a small line for the subdivision or the eighth note. Okay, so now our eighth notes. Try and space them out evenly. So we have and if you're just starting out, it can be very helpful to write in your count. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now let's give it a try. I'm gonna go nice and slow. You wanna be making a mark. Every time I play a note, you should be making a mark, okay? Three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Good. So now we're just gonna do another one of those. <laughs> straight away, okay? I will, in the description of this video, post the time code for each section so you can back up and get more listings if you need to before going on to the next section. Three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay? So you should now have a series of rhythmic marks above your page. I'll show you what I mean. So if you're new to this, you might not have it in that. That's totally fine. So you're gonna have a line, a a horizontal line for every time that I played a note. And my 16th notes, the E's and the A's go in between. Okay, I want you to pause the video and translate these marks into note values. All right, good. 
Good. So now we are going to move on to the melody. And you don't want to try and get the whole thing at once. What you want to do is listen for the beginning notes, like the first like two, three, four notes, and then how we get to do. So we know we're going to end on do uh, here. And what you want to ask yourself is how am I getting there? What are, what are these two notes here? What are these two eighth notes to get me to do? And how would you start out? And also, do you hear any landmarks? Maybe where's the highest part of the melody? You can make a little star there, or just a little mark. Um, is there anything that comes back? Is there a repeating idea that comes back? Is there a note that comes back? And you're like, oh, do. I know this do. Just make a little mark. Okay. So you're just mapping out some landmarks along the way. Okay. Good. So let's give it a go. Three E and a four E and a one. Okay, I'm gonna play that one more time. So grab some more landmarks and then we'll talk about it. 3E and a 4E and a... So the easiest thing to tackle is probably the ending. A, a lot of times the ending is a little bit easier. So you're going to, it goes at the end, it goes do, do, do. So it's kind of nestling around do. That's a really common ending. Um, and what that is, is re, t, do. So we're just going to go ahead and write that in. Write in what you know when you know it. The beginning... Did you get that? So what happens? You also want to be thinking in terms of steps, skips, and leaps. There's no leaps in this one, okay? So a step, if it's stepping up or stepping down, it's you're golden, right? Because all you have to do is go to the next liner space up or down. If it skips, it sounds a little bit more like a chord. So here we have a skip do, do, instead of do, do. And then you want to ask yourself where it goes. So it's skipping up. If it was skipping down, it would be, do, do, right? It would return. So it's skipping up, stepping down. Okay. One more thing. So I told you to listen for a high point. Did you get where the high point is? It is here. So that is where our high point is. So, and from there it comes back down. So it kind of, it works up to that and then it works it way, its way back down to do. Okay, so for this next listening, we're moving on to our next step of get the details. But the trick to get the details is you don't have to get all of them, right? You can just get most of them and make some educated guesses. Okay, so then for this top note, if you can figure out how we get from re to the top, if we get from the top note to re, then you can fill in the space. Okay, so listen to see if there's any skips or if it's just stepwise. Because if it's just stepwise, you can just back up. You can just write the pitches up the scale until you get to there and then you'll have it. Okay, and that makes it a lot easier to fill in this stuff here. So let's give it another listening. <clears throat> Three E and a four E. Listen once more. Three E and a four E and a. Okay, so this is just moving by a scale, right? So let's back up and see if we can figure out where we end up. And I bet it will make sense.
And voila, we. Okay, so now we still have to, we still have all this blank space in. We kind of did the easy stuff. A lot of times it's easier to work backwards. So let's take another listen for how about the first measure? See if you can just get that. Three E and a four E and a. Okay, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna stop there since we already have the rest of it. So you know you start do do do, and then what happens? You kind of you just walk it down right to where? Where do you switch directions? So here we're just going down my step. Me Ray. Do so we kind of right. I mean we started on. Me, so this is the first time we actually get to do. <clears throat> and then we keep going down, and then we keep going down one more for this eighth note. And then here is where we change directions, okay? So if it's not going, your question is, is it going stepwise or is it skipping? And then how do we get up way up here, right? So figure out this stuff in here. This is probably the trickiest part of the dictation. So see if you can get all this sorted out. I'll give you one more listening for that. And then we're going to look at the rest of it and get the answer. Three E and a four E and a. If you need to pause, go to the description, back up and get more listings because we're going to go on and fill in the rest of the answer here, okay? So here it is skipping up and then stepping down. And if you listen carefully, you can feel, you can hear that this feels like it's going to do, right? So Ray, so here we actually have a reverse of what we have at the end. We have T, Ray, do, Ray, and it's just going up a scale for a little bit, Ray, me. Fa. Okay, so if you're getting lost in here, just take a minute and break it down and think about what you know. Okay, so if you're going up by step and you get to here and then you know there's a skip or a leap, but you're not quite sure, but you know that you get to do by step, then you don't actually need to figure out this interval, right? You want to figure out all the steps and then see what's left over. So that's the point of get the de get as many details as you can and then use some logic to fill in the rest. Step five, check your work. So here's where having some good sightseeing skills can come in handy, but you wanna be careful because especially if you're using Solfege, it's very easy to look at what's on the page and sing it wrong. But let's, let's try going through it. So we start with me, I'm gonna sing it down. Mi, sol, fa, mi, re, do, ti, re. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, ti, do, ti, la, sol, fa, mi, re, ti, do. So if you build up your ear with sight singing, you can sing back your dictation and check your work. Okay, that's it. So those are your five steps. So we have take a map of what you know or map out what you know before even starting. Take the rhythm look at the big picture. So get the beginning and the end and any key landmarks and then fill in the details or as many as you can get and then make some educated guesses and finally check your work. So important to check your work. Okay, that's it. So you can find a corresponding article to this video on my blog. Uh, it's oraltheory.com. You can click the subscribe button to get a new video into a new melodic or harmonic dictation practice video um, in your inbox a few times a week. And then you can also, if you have questions that weren't answered, leave them in the comments below and I would be happy to answer them. And finally, I have a free mini course on my website that is an expansion of this and it's called Three Tips for Melodic Dictation Success. Okay, I will talk to you guys all soon. Bye.